National Disability Employment Awareness Month is really meaningful to me. Um, you know, for uh, pretty much my entire adult life, I've struggled with and managed uh, epilepsy, um, you know, that I've had. And it's only recently that I've become a little bit more comfortable actually talking about it. It's really well said, actually. I, I could um, agree, I think, uh, and the word disability in of itself says ability. And I think, you know, what makes it so unique working for PVH is spreading that awareness and normalizing the unnormal or the untypical, as we usually say. I, I couldn't agree more in terms of the normalization and how important that is. Um, you know, it this topic is so important to me because I have a, a kid with that has several disabilities. Some of them are visible and some are un, invisible. And but since she was born with um, some of these disabilities, she's very easy um, very easily can ask for accommodations and can advocate for herself, but not everybody's comfortable with that. And she's always saying, you know, everybody, unlike other IND categories, everybody is one bad accident away from being disabled. So it really could affect anybody. And I think it's really important to highlight how, how successful disabled people can be with just the right accommodations. We can really tap into far more talent um, in the world, if we make people feel comfortable that this is a safe place to be disabled. I, I totally can relate having a son on the spectrum. And I think for both points, originally I struggled with it, even saying it, you know, out loud to, to Ajay's point. And then ultimately being an advocate, you know, 13 years later, which I think is, is so powerful. But what's I think most impressive is to your point is what we're capable of achieving with or without a disability. Debbie, what do you think is, is um, holding us back in a way, right? Because, you know, is part of it just the ability to talk about it op openly? Is, you know, can part of it, you know, related to the stigma? Or is it, you know, that um, as, um, you know, as a comp you know, as a company perhaps, or as a society, we just uh, are not used to talking about that and, and thinking about those accommodations? What's, what's your view? It's interesting. I, I think um, it depends on the situation. So like you were saying, I think the more we talk about it, the less stigma there is, the easier it becomes. I think part of that is having PVH and companies help managers understand what accommodations um, we're willing to do and, and how to make it easy to allow managers to help their associates get the accommodations that they need. I think that's an excellent point too. It, it immediately makes me think of a store manager that I have um, in the Midwest district who has a, a lot of his staff is um, on the autism spectrum. And what's interesting, I think our goal ultimately is with any disability and, and they have other disabilities too, not just on the spectrum, but is normalizing those questions or them being able to vocalize that. And I think it takes uh, someone with an open heart uh, as a leader to identify that and, and to really look at the workforce different. Um, these associates, every time I leave that store, I'm inspired and literally like want to cry at times. I have to sit in the car before I get back on the road because I'm like, wow, like the patience that he has to, to teach them, they're thriving, you know, in the environment. They just needed to learn it differently. Um, which I think is impressive, one, for the leader, but two, it's possible for every organization and every store and every company to really just take that time. And I think that's kind of my goal now is normalizing those questions um, and not making it a bad thing. How can we help uh, get you to that next step, right? Yeah. I think we also need to be sure that we have the flexibility to allow managers to implement what's needed for that person, which can be hard in a really major corporation with 30,000 employees and, and having to have policies and procedures. Um, we need to find that balance with what's the right flexibility that somebody may need to be um, productive and, and to really contribute, even if it's slightly, um, you know, out of the norm for what the, 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 the norm really is within our company. Absolutely. No, that's a great, that's a, yeah, that's an amazing point. Um, you know, if I think about um, the scale of, um, you know, the scale of our, our company and, you know, if I think about, you know, what's really needed and Erica, to your point, I think um, part of it is just creativity, 
right? I think, you know, kind of having that open mind, thinking of, um, you know, what, uh, what are the possibilities and how we can unlock them? Um, and I think in many cases, Debbie, I mean, the, you know, kind of the extent of the accommodations that we actually might need to make are not that major. Um, but it's um, being willing to, you know, kind of take the time and actually equip all of us with, um, you know, the answers to some of those questions um, and, uh, you know, the capability and the tools to actually actually bring those to life. Um, I know my ultimate goal, I think, is to really just get a great foundation of understanding and patience and, of course, choose kindness um, every day with what we do. I think as leaders, we have the opportunity to help craft that and ask the right questions. It's being in the know and, and, and pulling at those heartstrings so that leaders understand it's it's not just one way, it's a thousand ways. And how we get there ultimately is through uh, true leadership and, and teamwork, in my opinion. And I think we're doing that today, even when just with raising awareness, right?